uh, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to uh, our channel, Mr. Sam the Creative. And um, I know we've been posting a lot of videos, uh, we've been posting music, we've been posting interviews, and uh, you know, we've been posting the Chronicles of Mr. Sam, uh, which is a little bit of a funnier, more comical area of my field. Uh, but today, we get to be more serious. We get to be super serious. That's why Atakizungu Leo Ikosawa Hatu Vunji. We'll try our best. But uh, we can, you can speak Swahili. Oh, yes. At, you know? At will. Uh, at will. Uh, yeah. And uh, today we have a wonderful guest. And uh, his name is Dr. Bernard Theora. And uh, he is one of our leaders here in Raleigh, North Carolina, every African community in an area, a city, has its own leaders, like the same way we are back in Africa, in the villages. And it happens that Dr. Theora is one of our very, very leaders here in Raleigh, North Carolina. But I won't say much. I will let him introduce himself and then I will keep on asking the questions. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, wonderful time mm -hmm. that we're going to spend together. I pray and hope that uh, we will accomplish mm -hmm. what you want us to accomplish. Yes. You know, I cannot wait to, to talk to, to the people in, in this area. Mm -hmm. We have a lot, of to, a lot of things to talk about, things to say about these, uh, you know, the, our people here in the Triangle. Uh, my names are Dr. Bernard Thai Theora Thaituru. Thaituru. Bernard Theora Thaituru. Okay. Uh, you know, Thaituru, of course, is my father. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Any meaning to one of those names? Uh, I don't really know, but what I know is that, you know, the Kikuyus and the Maasai are neighbors and they are cousins. Mm -hmm. And so my, my name is a Maasai name. Okay. My father's name is also a Maasai name because we are, you know, literally we are half Maasai, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. And so my name is Siore, but the oh. Kikuyus could not pronounce Siore, mm -hmm. so they call me Fiora. Oh. And uh, my father's name was <laughs> Saituru also. Okay. <laughs> and they could not pronounce that again. Then they, they butchered it and became Thaituru. Ah, but see, that's great, actually, <laughs> just knowing that. It's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, so I don't know what the meanings are. Yeah. But that's who I am. I, yes. uh, like I said, Fiora Thaituru. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother is uh, Shinana. Shinana. Another is Maasai that an name. African name? Uh, is an African name. Wow, and a that, that, that's a beautiful a name. A Maasai name. Okay. That one I know what it means. Okay, what does that mean? It means she who loves meat. So your <laughs> daughter is Shinana. Shinana, yes. Yes, and uh, actually that's one of the best names I've had, uh, sincerely speaking. Okay, okay, yeah. thank I you. I have a sister, late sister. Her name is Saima. Saima. Shigadi. I don't know what they mean, but beautiful names. beautiful names yes beautiful names yeah so yeah mm -hmm. so uh my parents are late mm -hmm. you know and uh you know so i am uh, my father had two wives okay. and that's something we're going to talk about yeah uh, um, my mother died about three years ago okay and so uh at at you know our family now we only have my stepmother and where were you born exactly Okay, uh, I was born in a small village called Kamuguga. Kamuguga. Kamuguga is on uh, the Nakuru, uh, Nairobi Nakuru Highway. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, about 25 miles from Nairobi. Okay. And uh, I don't know if you know the famous Sigona Golf Club. No. Okay. Mm. That's the major landmark. Okay. Uh, you know, it's Sigona Golf Club is one of the oldest mm. golf clubs okay. in Kenya, mm. especially admitting Africans okay. to play. Oh. Okay. So, 
Yeah, so that's where I was born, mm -hmm. and I, that's where I was raised okay. by my parents before, mm -hmm. you know, moving out. Mm. Yeah. So uh, tell us more about your parents. Okay. And the culture around them, how they grew up, maybe. And uh, well, I wouldn't know how they wife, grew up. <laughs> maybe the experience you had with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, like I said, uh, we, I, I was born in a polygamous family. Yeah. Uh, my father had two wives, okay. and my mother was the older wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, the culture then was if, uh, you know, uh, the, the wife feels that they need a second wife. Mm -hmm. She's the one who used to go to woo. Ah. Okay? To the woo. First wife. The, the first wife would go and woo the, you know. Second wife. Yeah. Now, it would happen that way. Okay. In some situation, that's the way it would happen. Yes, yes. But in some other situation... Which is good. In some other, yeah. This time, the wife has no issues at all. No, she has no issues. As yeah. a matter of fact, she's bringing somebody in to help, to her, help her with some work. Wow. Okay? Okay. So, uh, I don't know how it, it happened with my, my mother mm -hmm. and my stepmother. Yes. But we grew up as a very, very tight family. Okay. You know, to the extent, I, I, you know, you would not know who your real mother is. Wow. That's how it was. Wow. It, it was an equal treatment. Yes. Yes. And the wives were treated equally. Of course, the younger one owed some respect to the older to one. To the older one. And it was totally okay. It's, wow. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, the Bible... Mm talks about somebody have not having two wives. Mm -hmm. But it was talking about somebody who aspires mm -hmm. to the leadership of the church. Yes. Okay, for instance, mm -hmm. a bishop. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, or an elder. Or an elder. It is very, very clear. He must be a husband of one, one. wife. A bishop, an elder. Someone who has that attachment that, to the that, church. That, that leadership role. Yeah, role. You know, and, uh, but, but people confuse all that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, like I said, mm -hmm. it's a topic that we can, uh, we yeah, can go back to can, some time, some actu other time. Actually, we will because it's broad. And <laughs> yes. A lot of my friends, uh, a lot of my African, Kenyan, especially friends, they, they totally believe it's okay for them to have 10 women, which... Which are, you no, know, no, no. we'll discuss that. L let me say mm. this, Sam. Mm. When you talk about 10 women, mm. uh, it's different from 10 wives. 10 wives. Okay? Yes. 10 women, we know even mm. here they have 10 women. Yeah. They have, a, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but those are not wives. Yes. Those are women that they meet. and They, they meet out there. They meet out there. Yes. They do not have any responsibilities with them. And they nothing, just sleep with them and that's it. No ceremony was performed. Yes. But Except, in um, our culture, mm -hmm. we when we talk about a wife, it's a wife. It's a wife. You know, yeah. where you have gone and you have paid the dowry. Yes, traditional. Uh, you know, everybody in the village, mm -hmm. everybody e everywhere knows that this, this is my wife. Exactly. You know, yes. now if you look at the law in Kenya now, it, mm -hmm. it changed mm -hmm. and accommodated somebody can marry a second wife. A second wife. But the, the crowd says mm -hmm. that the first wife has to agree and, uh, and to approve. <laughs> there is a clause. Yeah, so okay. I, I don't know how they are doing it, Sam, yeah. mm -hmm. because I have not tried and yes. I'm not marrying her. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on. I see your mom, uh, uh, your stepmother, Alice. Yes. Yes, uh, Kenya. And, uh, Ka Kaya. 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 And they both actually took the last name. Oh, yeah, they took, yeah, they of course, too. yes. Okay, okay. Uh, you say they were in total oneness. They were so, in total oneness yeah. and, uh, you know, in a polygamous home, normally, especially when we were growing up, yeah. I'll give you, you know, and I'm going to allude to that as we go. Yes. When my father, mm. uh, when I was born, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm now getting ahead of myself yeah. because I'm on question number three. Yes. When I was born, Actually, we can jump to yeah, that. Mm -hmm. my father was not there. Because he had been arrested, because he was a a, a, a Mau Mau freedom dad fighter. Was a Mau Mau freedom yeah. fighter. Yes, 
And, and so, Raleigh does not know that. And so, okay. when I was born, okay. my father was in detention camp. Mm. Okay? Now, I, you know, I was so young, you know, so I don't even know when he was released. Yes, yes, yes. But I'll tell you, mm. I did not see my father or I, can, I don't have any memory mm -hmm. of spending time with my father or even seeing him. Yes. You know, yeah. I, until I was about six years. Wow. Because uh, when he was released from mm -hmm. detention, yeah. when I don't know, mm -hmm. he went to exile uh. in Tanzania. Oh. And so he stayed in Tanzania. Mm. Then he, he, called, he, he called his wives yeah. and he wanted them to go. Mm. The first one to go was my stepmother. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Guess what? She took me and my older sister yeah. and one of our children. Wow. So the three of us wow. went. So uh, uh -huh. my, my, my stepmother mm -hmm. took me to Tanzania mm -hmm. with my sister yeah. and one of the, her oldest child. Mm -hmm. And so we stayed in Tanzania okay. until Kenya got independence ah. in 1963. Uh, we came back from Tanzania in 1964. So, so, so that's why I was saying that I don't have any memory of yeah. my father mm -hmm. until, I, I, I want to believe, until I was seven, six, seven. Wow. So any relationship? Like, did you build any kind of relationship? Well, uh, yeah, we did. And, uh, you know, Sam, if, if you look at somebody with 21 children, yeah. <laughs> They don't have time, yeah. you know, to, to build that kind of, uh, mm. you know, close relationship. Yeah. The only thing is that he was providing. Mm. He was paying our school fees. Yes. You know. Uh, it was not like today, oh, you no, no, have no. to hug your daughter every morning. No, 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 no. Yes. Hugging, no. Yes. <laughs> Hugging, no. <laughs> even, even to hear the word love, yes. no. No. But mm. you know the guy loves you. You know the guy loves you. You know, you know yes. your mother loves you. I think that's one conflict I had. Uh -huh. uh, my dad seemed to be very cultured. And uh, my peers, I could hear their dad telling them, I love you, they'll play around. Mm. And, uh, you know, the mom would cuddle around with them. And my parents were very cultured. Mm. And I'll go back home and I'm like, hi. Something is missing here. Yeah. And when I grew up, I was like, oh, I missed a lot of love from my parents. But then I read some books and some history. And I'm like, oh, no, I did not miss anything. It was just... Now you can, yeah. now, now you can appreciate that yeah. because, you know, like I said, mm -hmm. you know, our family, we were 21. Wow. <laughs> now, how, what kind of cuddling is my, yeah. my father going to do with 21 kids? 21 kids. kids. You know, so yes, yes. deep in us, we knew that he loved us yes, because yes, yes. he was doing everything to make sure that we are provided for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the kids who are not the, 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 the kids of today, yes, whereby yes. they want ta to be the touched, touched yes. they want to be felt, and, yes, you and know, to and, 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 and to be appreciated. Yeah. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that because yeah. times are changing. Times are changing. But uh, there is no one time I mm. felt my father did not love me. Okay, okay. There was no one time. Wow, wow. So school. Like I said, I was born in Kamuguga. Okay. And so the first place I went to school is in Kamuguga. Mm -hmm. I went to school uh, in a school, uh, I mean to a primary school called Kamuguga Primary School. Okay. I stayed there for only three years. Up, you know, the class one, class two, class three. Mm -hmm. Then uh, my grandmother, we had a farm in uh, a place called Kerwa. Kerwa is near Emuru. Okay. So we had a cold farm. Place. Yeah, cold mm -hmm. place. We had a, a farm there, and that's where my mother, my grandmother, mm -hmm. my paternal mm -hmm. grandmother was staying. So uh, it, I went to class mm -hmm. four mm -hmm. in Kerwa Primary. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I went there to stay with my ma my grandmother mm -hmm. because my grandmother, of course, was staying alone. Okay. Uh, her husband died long time ago. We nobody, of, none of us know no knew him. Mm. We didn't, we never saw him. So I was taken there to stay with my grandmother. Okay. Uh, that's where I did my class four, five, six, and seven. Okay. 
That time we used to sit for an exam called CPE, CPE Certificate yes. of Primary Education. education. Mm -hmm. So that's what I sat for in 1970. Mm. Unfortunately, I was a very, you know, aggressive young man, so yeah. I did not make it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, mm. I did not make it, mm. but bad character but you know because mm -hmm. especially being raised by your grandmother exactly <laughs> exactly so uh mm -hmm. then at that time after that mm -hmm. uh i was taken to another you know my my parents at that mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. had moved to a farm in thika mm -hmm. okay yeah. so they had moved to a farm in thika and uh, so they decided uh, instead of him repeating mm -hmm. there why doesn't he, why, why not bring him here? Yeah. And he continues here because, you know, I would be under the watchful eye of my father. Mm. You don't fool around. Those, yes, yes. those Mau Mau guys, <laughs> they, yeah, Sam. Yeah, they were serious people. <laughs> they were serious, serious people. Mm. So anyway, I was transferred to Krimambogo okay. Primary School yeah. uh, for one year. Mm. I did my CPE again mm. and I passed. Oh, wow. I passed and I was, uh, I went to Kairi High School. Kairi. Kairi High School mm. is in Mangu. Ah. It, it, it used to be called Kairi Boys Kairi High School. Boys. Okay. So that's where I went. It's still up to today, yeah? Oh, yeah, Kairi it's still boys. there. Yeah. It's, it's still there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I went mm -hmm. in 1972. Mm. And uh, again, in 1972, I, I went. I stayed there for four years. Okay. Uh, there, I was not joking, so I, mm. I, I, I had matured, yes. and I knew what I wanted. Mm. So I did my CP, my, my O-Levels. Yeah. We used to call it O-Levels. Okay. Certificate of high. Anyway, I don't even know. Yes. Mm. <laughs> anyway, okay. I did my O-Levels mm -hmm. in 1975, yeah. and I passed mm -hmm. uh, with a strong second division. Okay. They, they used to be... First division, second mm. division, yes. that division, you know, mm. or fail. Are you doing Nairobi Highway Secondary Yeah, school? from there I went to Nairobi Highway okay. Secondary School. I know that school. You do? Yeah, I've, I think I've been to that school. Okay, it is next to mm. Bellevue. You know where we used to go for, people used to go for drive-in cinema. Drive-in. Yes, yeah, it yes. used to be called Bellevue. Okay, okay. So that's where I went. I stayed there for mm. two years. Okay. Uh, doing my A-levels. A-levels. Again, I passed my A-levels, mm -hmm. and uh, I was now to go to Nairobi University. But at that time, I could not go to Nairobi University because the university had been closed. Yeah. And uh, what happened, once it was closed, there was a backlog. Okay. So the students had to wait outside mm. for another one year oh. before they joined the university. the university. Because the ones before you... Had strike? Yeah, there was a strike, yes. Okay. There, there, there was a strike. Mm -hmm. So the ones uh, who graduated before you, mm -hmm. you know, in A-levels, yes, yes, yes. had not joined already. Yes, yes. You know, yes. so we were made to wait. Mm. So during the wait... You know, uh, I decided mm -mm, I'm not going to wait. Yes. You know, so in 1979, mm. I talked to my mother, to my father. Okay. And they said, yeah, you can go. Okay. So I went to India. Ah. They facilitated that for you? Yes. Okay. They facilitated and that through, uh, there was uh, an MP okay. of my area mm -hmm. who played a role. His name was uh, Muigai Kenyatta, the Muigai. son of the... Yes, of the, the, the president, mm -hmm. the first son, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was our MP, okay. and he knew okay. he knew my my family. Your, your family. So he's the one who facilitated mm -hmm. for me to go okay. to go to India. Wow! And what did you study in India? Uh, in India, some I studied uh, economics. Okay. Uh, I studied economics mm -hmm. uh, for three years, mm -hmm. and I graduated in 1982. I graduated, and upon graduation, of course, I came back to Kenya. Mm. And when I came back to Kenya, I mm. started working with the Ministry of uh, Livestock Development. Mm -hmm. Although I was employed by the Ministry of Planning, Finance and Planning, okay. but we used to be seconded mm. as planning officers to different ministries. Okay. So me, I was seconded to the Ministry of Livestock, Livestock. Development. All right. Yeah. Wow. Hardships. Oh, 
hardships. Now, when you talked about if I experienced any hardship when I was in primary school, yes. no, I no, did not really. because okay. God was there. Yes, yes. India, India was a nightmare. Oh my goodness, <laughs> tell us about it. <laughs> India was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. If you remember, I, I, I don't know if you are born, Sam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in 19, uh, when we, when I went to India, well, that was in 1979. Okay. It was immediately after mm -hmm. the first president died. Ah. President Kenyatta died in 1978. 78. Okay. Yes. And so one year later, that's mm -hmm. when I went to India. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went to India, one of the biggest problem, of course. If you are there, you mm -hmm. cannot receive the shillings. Yes, yes. You can only receive foreign currency. Yes. And foreign currency is the dollar. Yes. And it is so happened our economy after uh, Kenyatta was the economy was doing very very bad. Oh, okay. During uh, you know when, when Mo Moi got in, when Moi took over. Yeah. You know initially you remember there was I don't know if you there remember there was that coup. There was no in, yeah. the coup was in 1982. Oh, that was 82. So, but what happened was mm. that when uh, we when Kenyatta died, okay, there was some power struggle. Okay. Where the Gema group ah. did not believe Moi should become the president. The president. Oh, now that's new for me. Okay. Yes. So they did not believe and they wanted to kind of maneuver mm -hmm. the constitution mm -hmm. so that the power remained with the Kikuyus. Yes. Okay. Mm. The Which could have been uh, Matiba or who? No, no, no. Matiba was not even was in the, he was not even in the scene. Oh, okay. I mean, he was, he was still there, but yeah. he was not a heavy politician. Okay, okay. I don't know who they were trying to maneuver it yeah, for, yeah. but I remember the situation was saved by Jonjo. Jonjo, Charles Jonjo. Charles Jonjo, because mm -hmm. he was the chief justice. Mm -hmm. Was he the chief justice? Yeah, he was the chief justice. Okay. Uh, because he later became the minister for constitution affairs, mm -hmm. constitution affairs. The hardships in, uh, in, in uh, India, mm -hmm. you know, the country did not have any foreign exchange. Yeah. And so we were not receiving any money. Oh my goodness. So sometimes we would go for weeks and months without money. So and in India, you know, Sam, to tell you, India, you yeah. cannot work. You can't work? No, because there are one billion people and they don't have jobs. And so the, you are the least of uh, any kind of a problem. You are the least of their, pro of their yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it can, make you, it can make you a beggar. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. we had a, now. Who are you going to beg from? Exactly. Because they are very poor. They are very I, poor. Indians are very poor. Yes. Even if you see them in Nairobi, that like they are. Yeah. They are very very poor in, in their country. India. Yes. You know, so there is no way you can even beg. My now, goodness. you know, I want to to say this. What saved us mm -hmm. is what we call the Kenyan resilient spirit okay and the the, the the spirit of brotherhood yes and sisterhood yeah that is what saved us many of us you had the togetherness we were together and so what have used to happen is if you get your money mm. you're not going to spend that money alone no okay okay you are not going to spend the money and alone we're talking about currency yeah not like today currency is not shared so much no 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 the, the thing is Anybody who would get their money, yeah. because of course we, we were together with sons of ministers, mm -hmm. sons of politicians, mm -hmm. and the way they used to do it mm -hmm. is they would deposit some money to, uh, you know, the, these Indians who are in Kenya, mm -hmm. they would deposit money into their accounts, their accounts. and then the, 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 the child the, uh, would get money from, from, from the relatives from the on the other, other side. Oh, so that's the way it started. It is oh used to play. My goodness. So, uh, but it worked because mm -hmm. whoever got money, we we used to get to know, right. and uh, they, they never used to hide. We supported each yeah. other, you know, and uh, yeah, it was it. Was, but it was rough. Wow, it was rough. Guys, you hear that? It was never easy. It was it was rough. Oh. My. Good. That's why some, if I meet somebody who went to school in India and graduated, yeah. Namtolea Kofia Kilawakati. Wow. <laughs> so, 
did you ever venture i know you ventured in business yes uh, but you know you be the driver to this because i don't know if you'll tell us how you came here and how you got to business or maybe you started business in kenya because i know you also as a businessman yes mm -hmm. well uh i i when you know i told you i worked for the ministry of livestock development yeah uh, and then uh, I got a scholarship and came to the U.S. Uh -huh. in 1984. Yeah. I did my grad school at the University of Arizona. Mm -hmm. I did a diploma at the University of Colorado. Okay. And then after graduation, I went back. Yeah. So when I went back, I continued working with the ministry. Mm. Then in 1990, mm -hmm. I came back to the U.S. Okay. Uh, I was at Harvard University. I did a diploma. Okay. And then uh, I went back. When I went back to Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, I was poached by uh, an organization called uh, IDRC, okay. International Development Research Center of okay. Canada. Wow. They poached me. They had a big project at mm -hmm. Egerton University. Yes, yes. So I was poached and I went there to become a director of one of their research projects. Okay. This research was doing, uh, I mean, this project was doing research mm. on vegetable oils. Okay. Which was the largest commodity import, agriculture commodity imported into the country. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went there and I started working uh, there. And, uh, but I was fired in 1993. Okay. Fired by the university. The not, university. Not, not. Yes, yes. <laughs> But what happened was mm -hmm. uh, during in 1992, okay. although I think that could be another story. Mm -hmm. In 1992, I'm just going to mention. Yeah, it. mention. In 1992, uh, we had the general elections. Yeah. And that is when Matiba, that was the first one. That is when Matiba came into the scene. Yes. You remember? Yes. And uh, he was contesting. That, was that after Saba Saba? Saba Saba was 1990. Okay. That's when we wanted a new president. Yes. Okay. That, that's when the Moti Party was introduced. Introduced. So in 1990. 1992 is the first time we had election. Election. Moti mm. Party election. Yes. In 1990. Yes. So I, I was at the university mm -hmm. and uh, we got a directive mm. by the vice chancellor. Yeah. His name was Kip Toon, Professor Kip Toon. Yeah. And we were told that all our vehicles should go and campaign for the president. Mm. Now, my vehicles were, <laughs> were not literary <laughs> government vehicles. Yes. They were owned by the Canadians. Yes, yes. Uh, and so I said, no. You said no. <laughs> I'm not going to allow my vehicles to go and campaign, campaign for, for the, the president. president. And, and that I, was an order, yeah? It was an order. Oh, my God. And, and I, I said, especially mm. going to a place where we do not have a research component. Yes, yes. So... Uh, his, his, uh, he, uh, he, he wrote a letter and said, I have disobeyed him, and by implication, I have disobeyed the president because he is an appointee of the president. And the president is the chancellor of the university. Of the university. So oh, that had to come to an end. I knew I, knew I was in bad yes. sh shoes. But then, I, you know, literally I was fired after the elections. Okay. You know, after the elections, mm -hmm. and Moy came back, mm -hmm. I was shown the door. Yeah, I was told bye. It's too bad he he won. <laughs> yeah. So it is at that time now mm -hmm. when I went and uh, you know I was teaching at a university in Langata called Nazarene yeah. University. I have heard of it. Yeah, that's where I went, and I con I started teaching there, mm -hmm. and then I decided to start my own business. Okay, I started a pharmacy business. Okay, in Nairobi. And I was also doing uh, some transportation, matatu. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, that's yeah. That, right so that's that's where I started my business. Oh. And wow. I and I ran it until I moved here. Okay. Let, let me connect. Yes. Yeah, connect. I moved to. here, mm -hmm. and of course, when you move here, you you have to do odd jobs, but finally, I got employed by Research Triangle Institute (RTI). Okay. Uh, and uh, I was an economist there, mm -hmm. a survey specialist. Okay. And I worked with them for uh, until 2007. Mm. Okay, 2007 mm -hmm. is when I left them. Mm -hmm. uh, I left them because there was a lot of politics, yes. you know. Yeah. They do not promote black people. Mm. We, were, we were the only 
few, we were only two mm. black men in management at RTI. Mm. So, and I, I, I would train some people, they would pass me and, you know, and I decided, wait a minute, I'm going to start a business. Yes. So I bought my first store in Durham. Yes, I remember that. And so when I bought my first store, I, that was in 205. Mm -hmm. I started running it. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was still at work. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, if I buy the second store, I'm going to quit my job yes. because I was being frustrated, you yes, know. Yes. I would write papers mm. and they would not allow me to present yeah. simply be because... Just to interrupt you, do you know, I heard a rumor that Theora quit his job to start two stores. That, and that also made me more aggressive towards doing business, uh, towards me quitting my job. Yeah. That's why I've always mentioned business whenever yeah, I'm yeah. talking with you. Okay. Yes. Well, <laughs> you, you you really affected many people. Okay. You made people believe. Yeah. It's possible you can quit a big job somewhere and start your own. It, it is possible, yes. but one of the things that we need to understand is to understand the the political landscape. Yes. In this country. Yes. And the the political landscape mm -hmm. sometimes affects your business as a the, as a minority. I see it. So, and, and again, mm -hmm. how I quit my, my store mm -hmm. is another story. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, uh, I told myself, if I buy a second store, mm -hmm. then I'm going to quit my job. Yes. And thank God there was an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I bought a store in uh, Roxborough. Roxborough. Okay? okay. So I had two stores. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait a minute. I'm making more money than, you know. Whatever you And I'm make. not having a headache. Mm -hmm. So I quit. Yes. Uh, I, you know, so when I quit, I ran this business for, for you know, the, the store in uh, Roxborough mm. did not do well. Mm. So I, I sold it almost immediately. Okay. And actually not selling it. Mm. I closed it. Yeah, you closed it. Because it, what happened was, you know, these stores are affected by the population in the area. Yes, yes, yes. And there were two big factories. Okay. In that area. Mm. And most of the people my customers okay. were working in those factories. those factories. And so those two factories were closed. Oh my goodness. And so they affected my business. Yes, yes. So I had definitely. to I had to close it. Yeah. When I closed, I came now to the to the one in Durham. Yes. And it, it continued doing well until two thousand and eight. That's when we started seeing the economic yes, downturn. Down. And, of course, that's when Obama became the president. Yes. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say loudly, mm -hmm. but, uh, the you know, the Republicans decided we're going to frustrate this dude. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, that can be said loud. You know, yeah, so, mm -hmm. uh, so that's when we started now having problems. And uh, you mentioned the political, you know, uh, temperature or the uh, political, you know, uh, weather uh, that actually makes us Africans especially, or even actually, let's say black people, mm. uh, did you find it so hard to do what your white counterparts did? For example, I'm in the filming business and I have to work three times harder to make the money that other Americans who are light-skinned are making. I have to, actually my ecosystem is widely black. By the time I get a white customer, I have 10, 15 black customers. You know, uh, the politics and the racism and all these things mixed together did they affect how your business performed? Uh, I won't say it. The, the business was affected by by the by by any racism, racial. you know, any racial connotations. Yes, yes. Because uh, you know, m most of my customers were black. Neighbors. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a neighborhood, neighborhood store, store, and most of the people were black. So yeah. Now, so that was not, uh, you know, that, that was not an issue. Okay. I Even the inspectors, the police. Uh, they, they, now, the police, 
you know, they target some stores, yeah. especially if they know there are drugs there, you know, happening. Yes. They will target some stores because yeah. they want to close some of them. And if a store is near a school, they don't want it. Okay. So you can be targeted. My. And as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. and like I said, it's another story mm -hmm. for another time. Yes. I, I closed my store because mm -hmm. I was targeted. Oh. Whereby a police officer came in, uh, in pretending to be a, a, a merchant. Yes. A merchant. Oh, a merchant. Okay. okay. You know, they are what we call briefcase merchants. Yes, yes, yes. They come, they sell you baseball caps. Uh -huh. They sell you some, you know, funny stuff. Yeah. T-shirts, you mm -hmm. know. They normally go to New York and buy them and yes, bring them and here. bring them down. So this guy came and he had uh, basketball team's caps. Okay. okay. And that was almost the season. Yes. And oh. I bought. Yes. You know, and I made the first business mistake. I never asked for a receipt. And, uh, the, and, and it's not that I did not ask, but yeah. this guy, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was He was trapping you. So he was trapping you. He was setting you It up. is called entrapment. Yes. So I did not get a receipt. And that's not legal, right? Entrapment. It's no. not legal. It is yeah. not legal. Yeah. But let me tell you, yeah. if you are a minority, if you it, do not know the does. law, what and are you going to do? Even if you know it, sometimes... You can't do anything still. No, you can't. Yes. So anyway, that, that's what happened. Mm. But I, like I said, it's a long story. For another day. For another day. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tell us about your wife and kids. My goodness. Yeah, <laughs> this, uh, before you even go there, you know, the other day you told me we were talking and then you said, oh, I have to have dinner with my kids and wife every, every weekend on Sunday. Yeah. And I'm like, who does that? How organized are you? How disciplined are Raki Mashinana? I, uh, my goodness. That's what we do. That's Tell us about your family. Tell well, us about them. <laughs> yeah, I am married to uh, my <laughs> wife, Yes. Elizabeth Theora. Uh -huh. Elizabeth Waheto Theora. Okay. She's from your place. Uh, yeah, we have good, good women. That's stereotype. <laughs> Let's throw it off the window. <laughs> so I was married. I've mm -hmm. been married to her for the last uh, thirty-two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we moved here, we had to make a decision about our priorities. Okay. Of course, we have three kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Brian, mm -hmm. who is our first son. Then we have two girls. Okay. Shinana. And Waigumo. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so those are my babies. Mm. Brian is married. Mm -hmm. uh, he got married a year ago, almost two years, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, one year ago. Okay. Because. Yeah, one year ago. One year in June. Yeah. And of course, Shinana got married just yeah, the other day yeah. in April. So I was supposed to do her wedding. Yes, home. yes, but, <laughs> but this <laughs> thing. Went the it, other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, and one of the things that we did was uh, mm. we made a decision. You know, we were doing well in Kenya. Yeah. I, c I cannot cheat you. Yeah. I did not come here to look for money. Yes. I had a business in Kenya. I was doing well. So it was for kids coming uh, here? Yeah. We, we, you know, mm. we dis at that time, the institutions in Kenya had gone down. Yeah. Even education, Moi had missed everything. Oh, a striking every other yes. semester. Yeah, and it will take you six years to get a four-year degree. That is true. Yeah. So that is what we decided. Uh, you know, our kids were young. Mm. So, you know, personally, I do not want to come to the U.S. Mm. because I had been here. I, I can agree to that. You know, I, I had been here, and yes. you know, you knew what is the big deal about the U.S. Mm. And if you are doing well in Kenya, yes. you live a better life, Yes, you know. Mm. So, but, uh, you know, we, my wife insisted, oh, why don't we try the green card? And mm -hmm. we tried the green card, mm -hmm. and guess whose green card won? Mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at oh it and my. said, maybe this is God talking. Yes. You know, so anyway, mm. the reason, mm. so we, I, I told my wife when we got here, mm. We, we looked at the different families and we saw there was some kind of, I don't want to call it madness, mm. but the, ch the, uh, the chasing of after the American dream mm. is too, too much. Mm. 
such that people are leaving their children on the TV. Yes. People are, you know, they are not taking care of their families. Yeah. And so we told, we said, me as, as the head of the family, mm -hmm. we are not going to do that. We're going to do jobs that we work 8 o'clock yeah. to 5 o'clock. Yeah. No more. So we you come had home. to start with you actually telling them, hey, we have to make sure we prioritize our schedule. As, as a family, yes. Yeah. So we did that and not then... just jump for no, anything no, that comes around. No, no. We did that mm -hmm. and and then of course we, we, we go to church, we are Christians mm -hmm. and uh, so when uh, my kids, we started the tradition of the dinners mm -hmm. when my kids went to college. Ah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, we decided, you know, and uh, you know, we're going to do this. Mm. Uh, every, every Sunday, mm -hmm. we're going to have a family dinner. Family dinner. And what we're going to do is, mm. it is like devotional. Yes. Okay? Family devotional. Yeah, it's a devotional. Uh, yeah, we yeah. come home. Mm. We have been to church. Mm -hmm. We start asking questions. How, how are you impacted yeah. by the message? Mm. What did you understand? What did you understand? You know, so, mm. so that's how it started. Mm. And uh, we have continued ever since. And wow. so even after they got married, they know on Sunday, no appointments, nothing. And because it's we're gonna, a blessing we're gonna, because they haven't moved. You have your family. They, they don't even want to move. I wouldn't want to You know, <laughs> but my son, mm. Brian, yeah. moved uh, a year ago mm -hmm. and went to Chapel Hill. Not so far. Listen, mm. he thinks it's too far. He oh. He's now moving back. He's moving, know, he's moving back in a week's time. <laughs> to, to, my dad <laughs> went to watch this. So uh, let me say, I wish I had a dad like you. Uh, whereby, my goodness, my dad is one of those men who used to disappear for months. He was yeah. a racketeer. Oh, yeah? And uh, he'll come back after months, and I'm like, who is this stranger? <laughs> but, you know, let's go. <laughs> so, anyway, mm. so that's how we started. Mm. And so the dinners have become very popular. Mm. Uh, you know, what I normally do is every Sunday, mm -hmm. it's me who cook. And ah. I provide, I don't, I cook meat. Yeah, you I, massage. I do goat every Sunday. And so the kids look forward to coming and eat goat at my house. Now, of course, now Brian is married and Shinana is married. Yeah. And so they come with their spouses. You know, you're making me now value family more. Uh, people like me personally have been raised by, let me just say it as it is, a broken family. Mm. My mom living somewhere, giving me out when I was a kid. This woman raises me for six months, another one in the ghettos for another six months. I'm thrown in Taita, where my, my dad comes from, another six months. And by the time I was 20, I knew not of anything to do with love or family. Mm. And actually, I had a girlfriend, and I thought I loved her, and I thought she loved me. And she left me, and... I was depressed for three years, mm. working triples and becoming a philanthropist without a direction, giving out money mm. at home. And before I knew it, I clobbered about five good years trying to find myself. And only books like, you know, I'm a reader, mm. basically. And they kind of rescued me somehow. I've had struggles to believe that family is crucial important that's why a lot of guys like us who are from a broken family we stay for a while without getting married and people keep on asking me Sam when are you getting married you are getting late but they don't know what's happening mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. you know and I'm not talking about just me alone I'm talking about many other young people and others actually some ladies out there who are either single parents or they just living cohabitated with them mm. with a man mm. and there's no relationship or anything you can call family values in that mm. yeah because a lot of us are coming from that background and having to hear what you're saying and having kept your wife for 32 years and having kids 
around you and zero conflict for me i had to struggle to forgive my parents mm. and forgive myself and forgive everyone around me and you know um so your mention of that really puts some fire in me mm. and maybe to whoever else that is watching mm. that hey it's possible and it's good I'll tell you, uh, Sam, uh, yeah. there is nothing I value yeah. more than my family. Wow. You know, as a family, I value so much. I love my wife. I love my children. How do you get to love her for 32 years, even after her body maybe is not the same way? And maybe she might be having quirks you discovered that are not so pleasant. And maybe you've had argument how have you survived all that I, it's it's you have to make a decision yes one thing is uh, you know sometimes when people are in, you know you want to say you are in love yeah and being in love is okay mm. but that love grows old it grows old okay so what are you left with is what we call a commitment so that love fades it, it 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 fades, you know. Yes. It fades, you know. But yeah. the thing is that feeling. The, the, yeah, yeah, you know the, the feeling is uh, you know it's like you want to bring her flowers. You yeah. you know th that is that is Western style kind of love. Exactly. You know? Now you do not get married out because of love. And to enjoy that. You do not get married yeah. because of love. You mm. get married uh -huh. to be whole. Okay. To be complete. To be complete. Because some, I don't care how much money you have. Mm -hmm. I don't care how long, how, what career you have. Yeah. If you are not married, you are not whole. You are not whole. Okay. We <laughs> get married to yeah. become complete. Yeah. To become whole. Mm. You understand? Yes. And love, mm. you know, you have to work at it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to keep that fire going, mm. you have to nurture it. You have to nurture it. You know, you have to work at it, mm. you know, and you have to have that commitment. Yeah. I am committed to this woman who God has given me mm -hmm. for life. Yeah. You understand? Yes, yes. I'm committed to her for life. Does it mean that she does not make mistakes? Oh, no. She does. She does mistakes, mm. you know, and you also do. Yeah. You understand? Yes. But you both are answerable to a higher power yeah. than That's yourself. Where. Okay? That's where God takes God. Yeah, we are answerable to God. Mm. You know, and that is what matters most. Mm. Now, I, I, I always like saying that, you know, when you are a Christian man, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm using Christian because, you know, that is what now we know today. Yes, yes. Because we used to have what we call uh, a committed African man. Man, yes. You know, an African man does not divorce. No. You don't... Uh, they, did you ever hear of divorce? Never. Never. Right now you know? it's over 62%. Now, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we have now turned to the Western culture, the TV culture. Okay. And you know, that's what we've adopted as Christianity. Yes. I think we should really dig deep and see what true Christian... What does it mean? Yeah. What does true Christianity mean? Yeah. And what does true African, African men look Me, like? Uh, yes. You know, actually, that's one thing we have to learn. Yes, yeah. it, it, it is something that we need to go back to because, my. My. because we have lost it. Yes, yes, wow, uh, that's a big topic. I think uh, I'll invite you one, one time to, so that we can talk about okay, more about marriage and young people like us, mm. uh, people like uh, there's a group of people who married young and they are, they are not really married because they married too young having no clue i can imagine if i got married at 20 and to me love was so physical mm. you know yeah i i think by now i'll be paying child support to <laughs> someone yes. or to maybe two three kids you know mm -hmm. yeah and there's a group that like me who are so scared of child support not even scared of God, but scared of child support. We kept away from those women up to today. Mm. But then we 
kind of end up trying to look for something in women that we can't find until maybe now we grow up and unless you read so much like me now i'm kind of I, I can say i've seen some healing in me my other friends are my age over 35 and they are still not in a rush to marry yeah, yeah it's a broken and that is society. where by uh, the kenyan community i wish mm. you can broadcast this yes. loud and clear yeah. so that we as uh, the pillars of the society yeah is the pillars of the community. Yes. We need to know this is a problem. Yes. And uh, knowing it's a problem, they, they should not come and approach me and, and point out, you should get, you know, no, no, the no, problem no. with our leaders, they come to me and you should get married by this year. What are you doing? You're frustrating me. What is wrong with you, you know? Who, and, who are you frustrating? Yeah, I know. You know, they are the ones who are failing because mm -hmm. we need to be mentoring you. Exactly. Okay, and that mentorship has been drawn out of the window. Yeah. And the reason is, it is both ways, by the way. Yeah, because some of us don't want to listen. Some of you do not want to listen. Mm -hmm. And also there are some other bad people mm -hmm. who, when they come and hear your problem, mm -hmm. they broadcast it. They broadcast it. And they have, and that's why I'm you know, no longer afraid of broadcasting. <laughs> so, it. so mm -hmm. it is, it is, uh, it is it's both ways. Yes, yes. And we need to have leaders, mature leaders, mm. who you can go and talk to, mm. you know, and yeah. want to be mentored by. Talk to someone who is 30, to talk to a 30-year-old you. Mm. Uh, well, what would you advise? Well, my, 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 you know, I have gone through this and, you know, because I've talked to my children. Okay. And I am a coach, a yeah. professional coach. Mm -hmm. I'm a counselor. Mm. And so I talk to people. It's an easy question for you. <laughs> so one of the things that I tell people mm. is love God. Okay. That's number one. Number one. It should be your pillar. Yeah. God should be your pillar. pillar. Number two is respect people. Respect people. What entails respecting people? What do you mean? What does it... Oh. Um, is it... Uh, for example, I can say I respect you, yes, but does it entail also calling you sometimes and checking on you? What does it entail? What, uh, well, uh, if, live my life? No, respecting people, yeah, is all that. Okay. You have to have a relationship with somebody. Yeah. You have to have a relationship with some people okay. whom you call, you respect, you know. If okay. you, you respect their judgment. Yes. That's the most important. Mm -hmm. That means if, let's say, you guys get married mm -hmm. and you're fighting, mm -hmm. you, are, you have somebody I can call oh. because I respect their judgment. Yeah. I respect that they're going to tell me mm -hmm. not what I want to hear. <laughs> but the real... The real, you know. Yes. So that is what we are talking about, respecting, you know. Yes, yes. So uh, that respect people. Number three, hard work. Hard work. That's what I tell mm -hmm. anybody. Hard if work. you love God, if you respect people, mm -hmm. and if you work hard, mm -hmm. the rest is, is you know, easier. is going to come in. Mm. Now, life is not smooth. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so you are guaranteed of challenges. Mm -hmm. Now, you as an individual, you have to make a decision. Yeah. Will those challenges break me? Or we, will they build me? Mm. We have to look at challenges, okay? Not as bad things, yeah. okay? Mm. But they, we have to look at them as lessons okay. and opportunities to grow. Oh, wow. So, say something to a 35-year-old like me who went to school and it never made sense. And started a business and maybe feels like time is running out because we do our math and we are like wow uh over 35 no kids just started a business about five years ago it's doing okay but my peers out there some of them are doing great and there are a lot of people like me and some of them actually they're like me, but they haven't started the business. They're somewhere at limbo, confused. Some of them are divorced. Some of them 
are paying child support and they're like wow once you hit 40 uh is it down the hill is there any hope is there what is there for us should we keep on fighting should we what, what to do sam sam i want to tell you one thing is mm -hmm. is that you have to find your own purpose okay and somebody else's purpose is not your purpose yes there are some people who go, they want to, they get married very young, mm -hmm. they have a family, mm -hmm. some of them stay. Yeah. Some marry when they are old, mm -hmm. they stay. They stay. So the journey is defined by you. It's no. your journey. Yeah. It's not your friend's journey. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you decided to, if you decide to start a business, mm -hmm. don't look at what other people other are doing. People. Focus on yourself because you are on this race, yeah. not with anybody else, with anybody but with else. you. Wow. The race is yours. Wow. Okay? Wow. So that is, that is what I can say, that wow. you are not competing with anybody. Mm -hmm. Compete with yourself. You hear it, guys? Compete with oh. yourself. Yes. And, uh, you know, if you feel, you know, it is never too late mm -hmm. to have a family. I'll give you an example. Mm. Our we talked about Jonjo. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Jonjo got married at the age, he was over 50. I want to believe mm. he may have gotten married at the age of 56. Wow. Okay? Mm. Now, it's a bit late. Yeah, that's <laughs> No, but, but, mm. but Jonjo, who is still alive today, he is over 100 years old. And a legend. You know? He drives himself. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Now, what I am saying is, his daughter, they grew up, they are lawyers, he has very successful children. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So it does not matter when you start. Okay? Yes. It is you. The process. The, it is you who mm -hmm. determines. Yeah. Don't look at, oh, they have kids, uh, you know, you're, yeah, 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 yeah. don't look at them. Mm. Okay? There are some people who come out of college and the first thing they do is to mm -hmm. build a house. Yes, yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. There are others who come out of college and they don't care about a house. Yeah. Okay? But eventually they, they buy a house. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a story. When I, when I came from the U.S., mm -hmm. you know, I had money saved, you know, and uh, my, my sister wanted me to buy a, a piece of land mm -hmm. in Mount Narok. Okay. You know? And I... And I say, wait a minute. No, I don't, I don't think I'm going to buy. <laughs> uh, and she told me, mm. Fiora, land is becoming expensive. You know? Yes. And I told her, I'm an economist. Yeah. There will always be land. There will always be land. You know? And in Maui, in Narok area, uh, it actually reminds me of my dad's story. He had some plots in, in Narok. Narok. Yeah. And they were all grabbed by Olenti Mama. Olenti Mama. Ended up with nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm saying this to, to imply, right now I have land. Mm. I did not buy my land then, mm -hmm. but, you know. Now so, you have it. Yes. Uh, yeah, so there is the time yeah. is determined by you. By you. Okay? And so long as you are speaking to your God and mm. he's ordering your steps, yeah. that's it. That's what matters. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, today we are speaking about my life, your life, and many other lives. But you're speaking to me a lot today. Amen. My goodness. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, <laughs> what do I do now? I don't even know what I do now mm. because I do so many things. Sam. Okay. Uh, every day, you know, primarily what I do is I deliver medical i do medical deliveries okay i deliver medicine to different very good business know. yeah mm. and uh, you know it has worked very well until uh until covid until COVID. you know covid suppressed it yes. but but we we, we, we are hopeful yes. the reason i like this business which is uh, you know is my business yes. uh you know if i want to go to kenya i just hope into the next plane and I yeah, go there. True. Then I come back and I start where I, you know. Where are you? Normally I go to Kenya every year. Oh, okay. You know, and I go and I stay nothing less than six weeks. Wow. You know. Wow. 
So uh, I like it. Yes. Now, on the other side, I mm. also do coaching. Okay, coaching. Yeah, I'm a professional coach. Mm. So like you if, uh, with your business, yes. if you want to be coached, yes. you can reach out to yes, me. Definitely. You know, and I, yeah. can, I can help you. Mm. Walk you through how to yes, balance, yes, how yes. to how to balance that. your life, yeah. how to work yes. life balance. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can do that. Okay. Uh, the other thing I do, I do counseling. Counseling. I'm a counselor. Couples. Yeah, I counsel couples. Yeah. I counsel mm. singles. I counsel mm. men to men. Yeah. And you know, you, just by doing this interview, I, I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so I do that, uh, you know, so those are the three areas that I work in, mm. you know, and, uh, you know, of course, I used to do consultancies, okay. you know, and training. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in this environment, and you're a black man, it's mm. not easy. Yes, yes. So I have a company called Synergy. Okay. ICCT. Synergy ICCT. T. Dot org. org. Guys, make sure you visit that site today and check it out. You know? And uh, I'm sure you'll get a lot of value from there and you never know. You might end up calling him. So, uh, basically, uh, you stayed in business all along once you decided. <laughs> Yes, you oh yes, never. oh yes. The, the, mm. the, you know, like I said, I'm doing mm. medical deliveries. Yes. Now, this one is whereby I now mm -hmm. use my education. Your education. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, biggest regrets? Oh, biggest regrets. Sam, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have any regrets in, okay. in this life, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I, I don't think because I have... Life Mistakes are lessons. That's, that's the thing. Mm. You know, mistakes are lessons that you learn yeah. and uh, they, they are opportunities. So they can only be regrets if you keep on making mistakes and yeah. you don't learn from them. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if you keep on making mistakes and you are not learning, yeah. then you are a bad student. Yes. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Now, eventually, you, you make you get regrets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, I, what I'm saying is, uh, you know, I, I don't like lamenting on on time past. Okay, yes. You yes. know, I like looking Staying at... in the past. The, the past is gone. It's gone. Yesterday is gone. Mm -hmm. What you have is today. Today. And you need to ask yourself, what am I going to do today? Today. Because no matter how much you cry, mm -hmm. yesterday is gone. Mm. You know? So it is today that I need to make a difference. And the right. difference I want to make is helping my people, yes. especially the Kenyan people. Wow. Uh, which, wonder, which makes me wonder why I asked you any fears. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the question is there and it looks like you've answered. Well, I, I, I said uh, my only fears are that I'm not doing enough to impact okay. my people here. Okay. You know? And I, I, I'm drawing that from the fact that no matter how successful you are, yes. Sam, yeah. if your life is not touching people, mm -hmm. it's an empty life. It's empty. You know, it's yeah. the life that you touch, the mm. people you talk to. That's what matters. That That's what sense. matters. Mm. Where somebody, somewhere, I'll give you a story. Mm. When I was in Kenya, mm -hmm. I, I started a project called... Uh, uh, an organization called Hope Worldwide. Yes. Hope Worldwide was working on HIV AIDS. Okay. You know, and I will tell you, I, I cancelled so many people. Mm. Some who were positive. Yes. And that we are talking about in the 90s. Oh my, when it was really bad. Yes. Some who were positive, some mm. who were uh, negative. Mm. I remember cancelling one person, a lady who was, she had been raped. Mm. And when she was raped, she got the disease. Mm. And uh, she came to me and, uh, you know, I counseled her. Mm. And, uh, you know, she is a member of the church I go to in Nairobi. Okay. And one day I went there. And to tell you the truth, that was after about 15 years mm. of being here. Yes. You know, of course I would go every year, yeah, you know. Yeah. But this time she looked for me, she came and she... 
she was almost kneeling in front of me and wow. saying, you are the reason why I'm alive today. Wow, that's impact. You know, you are the reason why I'm alive today. Yeah. And I told her, no, 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 I'm not the reason why mm -hmm. you're alive today. Mm -hmm. Okay? The reason why you're alive today is God and you. And you. Yeah, because you are the one who decided. You decided. You made the choice. You understand? Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you so many things, but you make the decision. You made the choice to listen yes. and act on it. Now, that is one that impacted me. When I had my store in, uh, in, in Durham, yeah. you know, there were three young men who used to come. You can tell they were members of a gang. Yeah. They used to come to the store, and they are young. And so one day, I had an office there. And I had somebody who was selling, who was a you know, shop attendant. Mm -hmm. So I, I called them to my office. Mm. And I said, guys, you know, I, I feel like I need to talk to you. Yeah. Why can't you go back to school? Why do you spend your time out here doing nothing? nothing. You know, they were African Americans. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they listened and left. And left. Some... About five years later, a young man came to my store, Im immaculately dressed. Ah. I did not know he, who he was. Yeah. And he said, sir, can I talk to you? And I said, yes. What is, what is it that you want, you know? And he said, can we go to your office? And then he told me, five years ago, you called three young men, brought them to this office, and you talked to them about going back to school. I went back to school, and I have graduated with a degree. Some, you know what I said? So I, I don't care. Hmm. The years I was there, yeah. that is what made it. Yeah. That one young man. It, it, that, it really, that one young man. It makes everything so worthwhile. Yes. Yes. And so, in this life, we have to touch people. You know, you never know. When you are walking on the street, you make somebody smile. Mm. You know, that person may have not smiled the entire week. Yeah. But you have made them smile. It's amazing. I walk at the park, at the athletic park here with uh, Rehab. And... Um, the moment we i say hi to everyone but whenever someone says hi to me before even i say hi to them and says it there in a jovial nice manner she realizes that i go jumping and energetic and high yes. and i'm like oh someone said hi to yes, me yes yes that it, is that powerful. is that is what it does yeah touching people it's powerful you know and it is that you know, sometimes you go even to church and you are listening to the message and you do not hear anything. Yeah. You understand? Mm. And it happens. It does. I, I, I know, but oh, that, that day mm. you may meet a soul, okay? Yeah. And you talk to them, okay? And that is why you went to church that day. And it's not to hear, yeah. okay? But God had spoken to you and you are to talk to somebody else. Yeah. And uh, actually, let me give you an example. I think I went to, I was invited to perform at UBRC, mm -hmm. um, at UBRC on New Year's. And I was very down. And actually, our organization, Refill Ministries, had zero, almost zero money in the account. And we had to do some things. And I was like, wow. We like keep on just pumping my money in this thing all the time. And I was like, the church called me and anytime I get called out there, I'm paid good money. But then, you know, this is home. They tell me, come and perform. And I'm like, okay, this is home anyway. And I can't even dare ask for anything because this is where I grew up. Mm. This is family. And um, I don't even try to tell them, oh, talk to, ma to the manager or something. But, you know, just going, I was very low. I was feeling, first of all, I'm low. I don't want even go to church. It's New Year's. And 
I get dragged. I, I, it's Njanja who called me, told me, come and perform. We need you. And, you know, reluctantly, I went. And then I meet Kanjo's wife after the performance. And she writes me this very good check. And she tells me that's for your ministry. I'm like, wow, you can just go to and you meet one person, mm. not only make you smile and encourage you, mm. but even solves the Some of very your problem that was bothering you. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's how it happens. God yeah. knows yes. how to supply for you. Yes. Remember, you know, somebody, I was listening to, the, to a song mm. in Kikuyu. Yes. And it was saying, you know, when Elijah was in the in the desert out there mm -hmm. where he, when he went he was running away from Jezebel mm. and he was wishing he could die mm. God sent egos to take meat to him to him egos when they see meat mm. that's what they eat that's what they eat <laughs> but they were taking meat to him, to him. and not eating not eating it you know <laughs> so <laughs> you are an ego that day <laughs> Yes, yes, but let's move on. We're almost done here, but I'm not so in a rush because believe me, mm. whatever you're saying, whatever you said today, it will not just stay in one YouTube video. Yeah, You'll see. You, you mark my words. The, the, your words will be echoed in many places and many ears will hear. Thank you. Yes. How do you go about business and career hardships? Yeah, you know it's it's tough, man. Mm. It's tough. You know, it's tough. For me, I'm single, and it's tough. You have a family. Mm. Hi. The thing is, Sam, it's it's uh, career and uh, even uh, business. Yeah. There will be challenges, mm. and like we said. It depends on what, how you treat those challenges. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Life is full of those challenges. What do I do? However, there is something we call contentment. Okay? okay? Mm. Some, you have this house. Mm. You have shelter. Yeah. And if I go to your fridge, there is food. There is food. Isn't it? Yeah. You have clothing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm. If you ask yourself, what else do I need? Is it the big car? You have a car there. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If we can remove the greed, which is with the people, mm. this world can be a better place. Yeah. Because there is enough for everybody. Enough. But we have become so greedy. Okay. There's no sign of contentment. Yeah. Somebody wants to climb and he, it doesn't matter who he hurts. Yeah. So long as stepping he... On other stepping on other people. So yeah. long as he gets what he wants. Yeah. But also, does it mean settling for less? Those are two different things, huh? The, the, you know, to be content, mm -hmm. you know, you can be content with less. Yeah. You can be content with, you know, whatever God whatever has God given has you. Given so long as it, he has given you the right way, use it. Yeah. Have, you know, and uh, going back to what we were... Because even, not everybody can become Bill Gates. No, or not Jeff everybody. Bezos. No, not everybody. Yes. You know, in this world, even when Jesus was here, he, you remember when he was, uh, he was anointed with oil mm -hmm. by Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. you know, and Judas said, why, why, what kind of a waste? We could have sold that oil... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and gotten a lot of money. Yes, yes. What Jesus said. <laughs> and, and give it to the poor. What yes. Jesus said. He said, the poor, you will always have, have them. them. <laughs> but me, I am on my way. I'm on my way. You know? So <laughs> the point I am making is mm. poor people will always be there. They'll always be there. You know? Mm. And just because of us. Poverty is not brought by God. It's us who bring poverty. We bring it. You know, we bring it to this world. Yeah. Because we cannot share. We, are, we don't want to we share. Are too greedy. Yeah. You you go to and see 
what is happening in Kenya, mm. you know. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, believe me, I sent 10, 20, 30. I've divided my money into 10s and 20s mm. to send to friends in Kenya. Uh, I, I, m Rehab is my witness. At least three times a week, I'll send three different people money who are stuck in Kenya. It's really bad. Mm. And on the other hand, there are people in Kenya who are swimming in money. In money. It's sad. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very very sad. Yeah. It is very very sad. Mm. But uh, you know, and and, and I, I think there is a question to that we are going to allude to. Okay. That talks about that. That talks about that. Huh? Yes. So, uh, how do you lead? Any good ideas about leadership? Hmm. Good question again. <laughs> uh, Sam, one of the things that we need to understand is mm. leadership is servanthood. Yeah. Leadership is servanthood. Serving. Uh -huh. if, you, if, you, if you want, a, one of the things that we have to remove, mm. especially among Africans, okay. and a, especially, a, let me not talk about Africans, let me specifically talk about Kenyans, mm. is what we call the big man syndrome. Okay, yeah. which has permeated itself in every sector of Kenya. You find it in villages, you find it in churches, you find it in our leadership. When somebody becomes a leader, okay, mm. they are not leaders, they are not servants, they are there to be served. Mm. You know, I have always wondered. They are there to be served. Served. Yeah. Not to serve. Yeah. You know, and but when, when he comes for your vote, what does he tell you? I'm going to go and represent you. I'll represent you. You know, and I'm going to serve you. interrupt you. You know, I've been blaming China a lot about coming to Africa and grabbing whatever it can and putting our country or continent in debt and end up owning big parts of our uh, economy. Uh, but I realize it's not so much the Chinese, it's our leaders. Uh, go on. Yes, yes, that, that is the, the fact. It is not so much the Chinese. It is your leaders who are selling your country. For what? To align their pockets. Yeah. You know, you go to churches, the moral places that should be calling those politicians out. Do they call them out? No. Why? Because they are like them. They collaborate, actually. They are like them. Yeah. You find a minister, a church minister with bodyguards, mm. a church minister with ch some chase cars. Yes. And, and bodyguards. And bodyguards and, so, so, and jets. So, yeah. Riding, I mean. That's coming in our next. <laughs> so, so you, you want, yes. uh, and I talked about it there, you know. Oh, okay. So you, you wonder, mm. wh what is gone wrong? Yeah. Where are the Elijahs? Mm. Where are the John the Baptists? Where are the Pauls who are tent makers? Yeah. Where did they go? And we are losing a lot of young people. That's the thing. Because actually some are migrating to other religions because most of our leaders are actually Christians. Well, yeah. the thing is, I... I, I yeah, that, well, we'll talk yeah. about that some other time okay. because yes. there is no true. need of migrating. It's, <laughs> we are deviating. You live in a house, you mm. fix it. <laughs> you fix it. It's very true. Uh, so uh, the sphere of control okay. are, the, are the things that you control. Okay. You wake up every day and you decide, I'm going to be happy, mm. or I'm going to be sad, or I'm going to be angry. Mm. You make a decision to be angry at her. Like you are saying, I have a wife for yes. 32 years. Yes. I wake up every day mm. and I make a decision. Am I going to be angry with her? And maybe she says something that's so off yeah, yeah, and she, you get so mad. Yeah. So it's within my control. Okay. Okay? Mm. That is what we call the circle of mm. control. Okay. Okay? Now, the outer circle, the other circle, Sphere of influence. is the circle of influence. Mm. Okay? Mm. Who are the people that you are influencing? Okay? And because we, you know, 
I, you know, when you wake up, okay, let's say you get married. You say you're going to get married next year. Mm -hmm. Now, you wake up, you, you go to work. When you are coming in the evening, you bring some flowers to her. What is that? She's going to be happy. She'll, yeah, she'll She's going to smile happy. and know that, oh, yes. he was thinking about me. Yes, yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Guess what? You are influencing her. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's with the, you. There are so many people oh. that we can influence. Yes. Okay? In a positive way. In a positive way. Okay? Okay. There are so many people that we can influence. Mm -hmm. That is what we call the circle of influence. influence. Who are the people that influence me? Mm. Who are the people that I influence? There are things in life, mm -hmm. uh, some, that happen. Okay. And you can do absolutely nothing. Yeah. You cannot influence them. You cannot control them. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Politics. Politics, one of them. You know, what can you do about nothing. it? Okay, the elections is coming and... No matter uh, what Trump says or does. You know, there is nothing you can do. Yeah. Now, there is the weather. Weather. Yesterday we were supposed to have a what? A storm. A storm. Mm. What can you do about it? Nothing. Just wait and uh, let it happen. Yeah. Now, that is... The, so, you need to understand what are the things that I can control. Mm -hmm. Okay? What are the things that I can influence? Okay. And what are the things that I cannot control? Mm. They are beyond me. Mm. You understand? understand? Once you understand that, mm. you live a, a very, very productive life. Now, you see this uh, sphere of control. Yeah. It is the smallest circle. Yes. Okay? Mm. But what you want is for it to grow. Oh, for it to grow. Okay? okay, to become bigger yes. and bigger to the extent it eats all, all the other. That means you are influencing so many people. And it means also that you're growing too. Yes. Mm. Now, if you, if, you, if you grow, now, if it grows beyond this, mm -hmm. and it can, yeah. but there will always be some level of influence, yes. you start eating on the circle of concern. Of concern. Okay? Yeah. Now, circle of concern, mm -hmm. there are some things that eventually mm -hmm. they become things that you can influence. Mm -hmm. For instance, you are doing business, you become very rich. Yes. You know what? You start mm -hmm. you start influencing politics yes, in this country. Yes, becoming a lobbyist. <laughs> you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So, the desire is for this circle to continue growing. And it grows with your growth. Basically. It grows with your growth. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But most important is mm -hmm. for it to grow in a positive way. In a positive way. Because it can go. It can, it can go, go the other way. Yeah, it can and grow in a negative way. Hitler eventually. Absolutely. <laughs> or, or it can grow. Mm -hmm. You are a criminal, mm -hmm. and everybody around you fears you. Yes. Okay. So you are influencing them, but you are influencing them with fear. You are damaging the community. <laughs> Basically, you're damaging. Yeah, but that's what we need to understand. Yeah. If you're a drug dealer, yes, yes. you can still have some influence. Yeah, we've had some big drug dealers. But uh, it will be negative influence. Very negative. Many people end up losing. Yeah. So you want, the, as this circle of mm -hmm. control mm -hmm. grows, it should grow in a positive way. Okay. Whereby your influence, you start touching people mm -hmm. in a positive way. Mm. Okay, if you become rich, mm. you start controlling the sphere of concern. Mm. What does that mean? If, for instance, you, you find, okay, this leader who is called Trump yeah. is a terrible leader. Yeah. We need to have a better person. Yeah. Okay, mm. then you, because of where you are now, uh, I can influence that. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You yeah. can do something. In a positive way. Yes. I can give my money. Mm -hmm. I can, I can, you know. Yes. So you can do so many things. Yes. So that is something that we need to understand mm -hmm. as human beings. Yeah. Where am I? Mm -hmm. Is my sphere of control mm -hmm. growing and changing into my sphere of influence? Yes, yes, yes. You I know? got you. You understand? Oh, that is deep. That's actually, that's very deep. Yeah. But anyway, we won't stay there for too long i think this could also be a subject yeah in future
because it can be very broad as i see oh yeah it is it yeah. is we have not even scratched the surface. Yes, yes, <laughs> this is deep. So tell us one of your darkest moments and how did you overcome it? <laughs> uh, so my darkest moment in life was when I was arrested at my storm. Wow. I told you a policeman came. So this guy arrested you? Not him. He came and he sold me yes. those things I told you. Mm -hmm. And he came again. He mm -hmm. kept on, you know, now we became buddies. Yes, yes. You know, and and, and for whatever reason, you know, it's like I'm a kufunga macho. That's the devil. Ona that ona kifunga macho. Man. <laughs> so <laughs> for whatever reason, I had never asked for a receipt. Yes, yes. You know, and so in November 15, 2013, mm. the guy came again. And I bought. Okay? Mm. He had now come for a period of three months. Mm. When he came and I bought, 15 minutes later, my store was full of policemen. Mm. Okay? And they said, Sir, we are here. This is the warrant. Okay? So it, it, is, it was staged because mm. how fast can they get a warrant? I know. You know? So I was arrested and taken downtown that was the darkest time but i they you know it was a waste of time on their side these guys instead of going for the real criminals they decide to employ someone yeah to spend time and resources belonging to the people yeah taxpayer yeah to victimize as somebody who is doing really honest business. Honest business. And Sam, let me also tell you, yeah. these are the same people I used to, you know, I used to, you know, Durham, there's a lot of drugs. Eh? Yeah. And I used to see people standing in front of my store. Yes, yes. And I could tell they are selling drugs. Mm. And I will take the phone and call the police. Yes. Of course, I would never want them to know yeah, because they can, they shoot, can you. shoot you. So I would call the police and they would never come. They would never they would never come. Yeah, I've heard of such stories. You know, so it, it, it was such a low moment in my life, you know. But the lowest moment is to hear rumors among Kenyans uh -huh. that I was selling drugs. Ah. <laughs> now that one, I, it never reached me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a surprise. <laughs> no, there, there was rumor that, you are selling drugs. that I was dealing with drugs and that's why I was oh. arrested and blah, blah. And yeah, I, you know, with our community, it comes with good and bad. Yeah, so yeah. I said, that, mm -hmm. to me, that was, that was the lowest moment, yes. you know, because I said, yes. wait a minute, I thought people knew me. Yes. I thought they know me. Yes. I thought they knew how I have fought drugs, yes. even in Kenya. Even in Kenya. And... You know, not only you, I can imagine how your wife felt. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. So Someone wasting government money to victimize. You know, that's, you know, it, it's terrible. It, it was terrible, Sam, and the worst part of it was mm. when they arrested me and took mm. me down, mm. of course I posted bond, mm -hmm. and then I had to get a lawyer. Okay, mm -hmm. I got a lawyer, and he went and uh, he came and told me, "Oh, all the charges have been dropped." Okay, but you have to do fifty hours of community work. So I said, "You know," and this lawyer, you know, I, I had, I was so tired, and I was so angry with you know, yeah. with life even, you know. Yes, yes. At that moment, I was feeling. I need to get into the second flight yes. and go back to Kenya. Back. This is not the place for me. Yeah. So anyway, at that time, uh, so he told me, oh, you know, they have said they are withdrawing everything, but you have to do 50 hours because the policemen have done a lot of work. So I said, uh, you know, I did not even ask. Work. Uh, okay, done. so what, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Oh, you need to go to a soup kitchen and serve. And serve for 50 hours. You know, and, and he said, hmm, just, that's, that's nothing. So I went. 
okay? Mm. And I did my 50 hours, yeah. okay? And I finished. Some, after that, I was so angry with my store, I wanted just to close, close it. it, okay? And I mm. went and I told my wife, I don't have a job. What I have is uh, income from the store, but by December 31st, I'm gonna close it there will no longer be any income coming from me yeah. until I get a job. Yeah. And we agreed, okay, let's do it. Mm. So I went and of course I was ad advertising it. Yes. 15 days before I closed it, mm -hmm. somebody came and offered me some money mm. to buy the store. Ah. 15 days. 15 days. Okay, before yeah. my deadline. Your deadline. Yeah. He came and bought the store. Wow. I, that was the happiest day of my life. <laughs> so these are two <laughs> different days. Yeah, yes. So I... The totally opposite. Yes. I was so happy. Mm. I did not sell it, you know, I did not lose money. Yes. But, but I did, did not, not sell profit. it at the Maximum amount yeah, that I, I, I would have sold it. Yes, yes. Sir. So I just left, uh -huh. you know. Wow. So... What? An experience. Wow. Best moments. Oh, the best moment? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't think, I, I know there are several best moments. Yeah. And the first best moment, of course, was when I met God. Okay. You know, that was my best moment. Mm -hmm. And that was in 1996 okay. in Kenya. I was in Kenya then. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, there are some people who met me and they wanted me to study the Bible. Mm. I studied the Bible. I was baptized, mm. although I resisted mm. for two years, you know, yeah. thinking I'm a, the sharpest dude in town. <laughs> the philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. that was the best moment mm. I can say. Mm. And of course, the second best moment is when I met my wife. You know, and especially she when I yes. when I proposed to her and she said yes, that mm -hmm. was the other next best moment. Yes. And of course, the that best moment is watching, okay, seeing my children being born. I see, and you have them in your head. Yes, like it's like you're reading. You know, <laughs> seeing my children being born mm -hmm. was another very very important moment in my life. Mm -hmm. Now them becoming Christians mm -hmm. and getting married to God, wow. that was another moment. Yeah. But more, then the other moment is when they got, got married. married. When I saw my son saying the marriage vows, yes. it was something else. I know. But let me tell you, mm. when I walked my daughter yeah. holding her, down the aisle. That was priceless. Some that was priceless. Wow. That was priceless. Wow. So those those are my highlights in life. Tell them something. Thirty years from now. Even if they watch this. <laughs> Thirty years from now, I will. You know, I I don't know what I said, but let me see what I said. Yeah, Twenty-one. Well. 30 years from now, I still repeat the same message. Yeah. I repeated. You know, when we moved here, Sam, you know, I made sure that my house remained a Kenyan house. Yeah. And I told that to my children. Mm. I told them, you are not in America, you are in Kenya the minute you walk into that door. Mm. So let me tell you, if I have to whack you, I'll whack you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, True. and I put the Kenyan flag there and I told them, you see that flag? Mm. That's a Kenyan home, yes. so it's not an American home. No. You can call the police, yeah. but I'll still whack you. Yeah. If you go out there and you get bad grades, mm. I can understand, but if I know that you did not work and that's why you got bad grades, yeah. then I will whack you. Yeah. Okay, but if you get bad grades, you know, You're if good. you keep bad company, mm. guess what? Mm. I'll whack you, yes. you know, so they understood that as day and night. Ah. I re so I told them the same message I said, mm. love God, love God, respect people, mm. work hard. So far, Sam, I can say I'm a happy man. Mm. I've not been disappointed by those children.
Well, I am so sure about that. You know, I have not been disappointed. I am so sure about that. There are few families like yours. Mm. Very few. 22. I think it's a continuation of being African. 21. Oh, 22. Mm. Do you consider... <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I said here, it is not that do I consider myself as an African. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I am saying every fabric of me mm. is African. Every fabric of me okay. is African. If you cut this blood, it is true African blood. Yeah. I love myself as an African. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, the thing is God never made a mistake for me to be born in Africa. Yeah. God determines where everybody has to be born. Mm. And he determines whether you're going to be born a Chinese, yes. an African. Mm. He never makes mis never, any mistake. No mistake. I have never had any aspiration mm. to be anything more than an African. Wow. And I'll continue fighting for that continent, mm. okay, and for my people, because I am a true son of the soil. Wow. I cannot ask for any better answer. So... Your next moves, or <laughs> big moves. I guess they start small, but... Oh, my, my... Do I have any big moves? I, I, I don't think I have any big moves. You know, moves. you've raised your kids, you've yeah. done school, you've done it all. I, I think the, the, the only move I can do, uh, Sam, is to see myself being more immersed in working with my people, our people here. I almost guessed that. And, and more so if uh, I can extend mm -hmm. and go start tapping, because I know there are so many challenges in Kenya yeah. as we are talking. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I, you know, I told you there is this thing that we are cooking, yes, yes, yes. the Kenya uh, National Council of Elders, okay. which is linked to the Kenya National Council of Elders in Kenya. Okay. So my dream is to work and to see helping my people back in Kenya, especially, you know, have a way of electing good leaders, mm -hmm. okay, and where possible, alleviating the poverty that is there. Mm -hmm. That is, those are the goals that I have. Those, those would be my major moves. Wow. And, more, and the other thing is I want to launch my counseling mm -hmm. and coaching, uh, you know, uh, program in Kenya. Mm. I'm waiting for the country to open. Yes, I'll be on yes. the next flight wow. to Kenya wow. to go and launch this. Wow. <laughs> Guys, you've had it. You've seen him and I believe you've learned a lot. And uh, where can we find you online? Because there's so much more. This is just <laughs> a piece of you that you've given us. Yes. Mm. Uh, when it comes to social media, I'm a very private person. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't use a lot of social media. The only thing I do use is, mm. uh, apart from emails and yes. all that, yeah. uh, I use uh, Facebook. 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 Although I'm not very, yes. you know, yeah. but there, if uh, I, you know, I want to do something, I can, I, yes. you know. And of course you have your website. Then I have my website. That is you know, uh, synergyicct.org. Yes. Okay. Now those those places you cannot miss me. And uh, you know, you can find me and uh, mm. and of course I'm a phone call away. Yeah. You know, WhatsApp is now what we are doing. Mm. So Wow guys, that was a pack. That was a that was just a, an experience full of knowledge, wisdom, full of encouragement, you know? It, it can never get better than this, you know? Maybe it will once you come back again, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so we really appreciate you as a leader in our community, as a great example in your family. Mm -hmm. And also as a entrepreneur, because one major thing we do, especially in our channel, is to encourage people to become entrepreneurs. Uh, one way of actually becoming better Africans and winning this uh, racism and so much trouble out here is by becoming totally independent and investing 
and businesses and growing them and win winning economically so you're one of the forefront soldiers one of the great great forerunners and i can say you're following the footsteps of mm. your dad mm. who was a mau mau warrior mm. and uh, i believe one of day, these days we should celebrate him and oh, maybe yeah. a few others a few others yes maybe we should collect a few of them some names and learn about them celebrate them online and also physically mm. create a good uh, celebration it is not good for you to just keep what you've told us today mm. it has to go and I, i know you have a lot more for us oh yes so oh, yes this is just the beginning of it and to to talk about the celebrating the heroes yes. you know we have what we call the heroes day the heroes day in is 20th of october of october but do, do we ever celebrate it yes in some North some you have disappeared you <laughs> i have business has, has taken me away yeah? no we uh, one of the thing that we 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 have done as kcfa okay is we have a, a walk mm-hmm. a 5k walk if if you have any ideas oh you know we would welcome that you know oh yeah sure and uh, and uh, you know because we want to really celebrate the, uh, our heroes okay th- who are gone yes. and our heroes today's heroes and actually the forgotten ones or the ones that have not recognized uh, yes. been recognized yes for example your dad i think he's as good as dead and kemathi you know he fought he so fought we need his name and many other names that we can recover yeah because many are lost yes yeah, yes but we need to recover them no we need we need to do that yeah because uh, you know we we when we see i i don't care the where the country is going mm-hmm. you know and of course saying i don't care is mm. maybe a careless uh, word know, not, not careless <laughs> for my generation but but the thing mm-hmm. is you know we you know we need to value what those guys did yes we need to value what they did mm. the, uh, you know i know we need second liberation and we need to talk about it yes. more in a more serious way yeah. because you are the people who are supposed to do the second liberation